Good morning fans. Welcome to the very first video performance of Art from the Conservatory. Our video producer today is Mr Bridge and I'll be showing you how to make a sketch pad from scratch because by now you are probably a little bit uh, stir crazy. You've been to your National Trust property and been turned away and you've also cleaned everything in sight. So it's time for a little bit of art now. Now, let's think about what we need to do this. First of all, we need a good flat workspace. The folding is really, really important in this. Now, um, if I wasn't being a bit tight with my paper, I would show you this A2 version. However, uh, as I've already made about four of them, and I've got very few of those left, I'm going to use a piece of A3 paper, this size here. Of course, you could be really stingy and use an A4. Now, these pieces of paper are very thin, and they're not the ideal. It is, it is good to have something that is quality. So, basically, a bit of drawing paper, 100 um, grams uh, or above that is absolutely fantastic. So cartridge paper. Okay, here we go. So we get this piece of paper and first of all, we just fold it end to end like that. So we are being very, very careful about the tightness and the accuracy of the fold. So holding it with one hand, pressing down with the other, smoothing out from the middle to the sides. So we should have a perfect fold there. Of course, it's wonderful. Now then, um, next thing, turn it the other way and we're going to fold it with the short ends meeting. So press down, smooth out. Next stage, we simply take um, the short ends and we're going to go to the middle. I'm turning it over. Right. So you fold into the middle like this. Again, the success of this really does depend on how carefully you do it. So no drinking your cup of coffee at the same time. So we press that in. Okay. So that gives us our sheet of paper that's divided into eight sections. Next stage. Now then, so we fold it in half like this, and then I find this works more effectively than just cutting along the fold. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to make a little mark on here so you can all see that particular fold area. And what you're going to do is you're then going to make a line between that dot and the fold side of it. There we go. It gets even more exciting than this. Now then, having done that, you reach over for your scissors and of course you could use a cutting board and a Stanley knife if you're being hyper accurate, but I know what you people are like. So I'm going to cut in there with my scissors just to that particular point there. So you can see what I've done. Next stage, this is the abracadabra point. We grab the two folds like this and we move that up like that. And then abracadabra, as I say, we have got the bare bones of the mini sketch pad. However, it's no good like that. You really have to then make sure you recrease your folds at the edges and the middle, like this. Now, it all goes absolutely fine until the very last page. And then you think, I've done it wrong. However, so uh, for the last page, fold over and then really press hard and recrease if necessary. 
Okay, so that gives you your tiny, tiny sketch pad suitable for putting in your handbag and sketching people in restaurants if you were allowed to do that. But now we've got that. Now, that's the bare bones of it. If you wanted an extra thick one, you could do two of these and then go on to the cover stage. But I'm going to take a break now. Hello fans, welcome to part two of Art from the Conservatory, or to be more precise, Art from the Gallery. All of these masterpieces are of course on sale if anyone's particularly interested. Now, back to the project. So we've constructed our book, our sketch pad. Here's a new improved larger version featuring cartridge paper. So we're now going to move on to applying the cover to this sketch pad. So uh, what you will need would be some card and you're going to make a front and a back to the book. Now this is um, relatively thin card. I wouldn't go any thinner than that. There we are. Uh, you could really make a solid firm backing and if you want to, for instance, make a cover out of fabric, obviously this would be too flimsy for you to undertake that particular task. So, however, I'm just going to do it um, using this. Now, so the next thing to do, take your booklet and here the camera hopefully will pan onto some of my exciting cover sheets. If you happen to have um, a Cole and Son uh, wallpaper fabric, uh, wallpaper covering book, then that's ideal. Otherwise, it's your choice. You can, of course, design your own cover. And, uh, but at the moment, we'll be taking the easy option. Right, okay, so, first of all, you need to decide which part you want to go on the cover. Now, that may seem a little bit, um, infantile to mention that but I did catch myself actually doing it that way and that's not quite what I want so the first thing you're going to do is lay your booklet onto your backing paper and you're going to allow I would say about two centimeters around the perimeter of it so I'm just going to mark that in now so two centimeters all the way around suddenly become not quite as square as it was before, but never mind. Okay, two centimetres there. Notice I've gone metric. Um, and then at this side here. Two centimetres is good because it gives you a nice margin uh, to allow for the inside of your booklet when you start covering it. So I'm removing, so uh, now you've got your book, you've got your backing paper, make sure you place it. I'm uh, offering up a two centimeter surround and then I'm just going to draw around the booklet. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this out. So with no need probably to see that particular part of it. So I'll allow you to do that. So we're just going to mark in the two centimeter border. The other thing we're going to do now, which is important is at each corner, I'm going to get you to just make a diagonal like this. Now, not exactly on that corner point, just a little bit off it. So it gives you a bit of room to manoeuvre when you come to cover it. Remember all those days when you were covering your, your exercise books at school, this will bring it all back. Right, so we do that in the four corners. And I think that's it for the moment. Right, on the subject of covers, choose your card, just draw around 
the perimeter of the book and of course you will need two of them just cut them out and then you're ready for the next stage now drawn it out like that and the next stage is to simply cut off the corners this is a legitimate time to cut corners right so i should just slip around like that of course those more particular uh, people might like to get the angles slightly different um, and the measurements correct unlike this one here anyway when you've got that uh, the next thing you need to do is just to carefully uh, pre-crease along those lines pressing down as carefully as you can no doubt there's lots of ways of doing this with a with a ruler but a little bit more accurately but we'll, we'll just go with this at the moment so pre-creasing it helps um, right so we've done that there now then in the spirit of blue pizza here's one I've done earlier and you can see that if you've cut it correctly you will not get a little bit of red showing there as in these deliberate uh, mistakes here where I didn't do it properly. Anyway, does it really matter? No. Right. Okay, so let's let's go to this next stage. And what I suggest you do is you use your extra special tacky glue. Not a glue gun, I don't think. Um, now, so take a little bit of the glue. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use my copy of Waitrose Weekend uh, as a base to do my gluing. I'm putting quite a bit on, but not so it oozes too much. And what I'm going to do with this, because it's probably not the stickiest glue in the world, despite the label, is I'm going to put it on and I'm going to let it dry a bit. So I will want it to be a bit tacky in the hope that it will stick more solidly. Now there's probably lots of other glues that you could use, such as boiled rabbit or something like that, but at the moment we'll stick to the more conventional ideas. Right, so I'm putting that to one side. Now, putting it all together. So what I've done is I've taken the book and I am doing it so that the folds are at the top. That's personal preference, it's up to you really. Anyway, now I've covered the front of the book with a good layer of the glue. And now I'm going to apply the cover which I made earlier, the front cover. Um, now, so you put this down first, making sure it's the right way up, and then you're going to carefully position this onto the cover. Now I'm trying to get it so that if you look there it lines up with the edge of the cover there and try and get a pretty even uh, edge so that you get a nice border at the top side and the bottom ideally the same but there we go. Right and then we're going to press down on that and then this part will obviously, uh, you know, take a while. And then what you're going to do is you're then going to put that to one side. You're then going to go on to this stage again, because by this point it will be tacky enough to stick down. You take your cover, you put that into here. And what you're going to do is just like parcel wrapping at Christmas, you're then going to press down on here, really going along those curves. It doesn't matter if it goes over the edge because as you know, you'll be sticking the back paper to that. So that won't matter at all. And then we're gonna press down there, press down here. 
this will happen. Having a pair of scissors handy. Keep that down. Pressing again here. And then you do exactly the same as we did earlier, putting the glue on the back of the book, lining the edge up with the edge there, and then press the whole lot for an hour or so. An hour later. So remove your book from the crusher and you'll see a stunning item but don't look at it too closely but anyway it does the job it's got a few pages in it it looks gorgeous and of course if you'd like to you can stick that down there and now I'm just going to talk about what you can do with this so clearly there's always a sting in the tail this was the easy bit now I have to produced for you this wonderful sheet on drawing faces and portraits and at the top here it says select one of these each day and your skills will really improve. I think to be frank that should say select one of these each week and your skills will really improve. Now of course you could make one book per section this could be a whole series of self-portraits in this book here. Uh, this, the next one is drawing a portrait from a photograph. Clearly that would be good too. So just to get you in the mood, I'm going to put that down there and I'm just going to show you the fabulous portraits by my favourite artist, J.G. Bill. This is one of his sketch pads here. You can see he's used Biro and you can also see that He's used it so delicately initially that he can then go on and do the whole thing, meaning that there may well be a few stray lines there, not a problem. So that's that. Just going on to my favourite uh, publication, which is the Waitrose book here, the Waitrose paper. You can see here portraits which are part of graphic illustrations or indeed the lovely Alvin Hall there. You can take these and you can use them in your sketch pad as inspiration. You can stick them in on one side, draw them on the other side. All great, great stuff to help you practice all those skills which we undertook in our portrait paintings. Right, uh, as usual, slight memory lapse. Um, I just wanted to say that regarding this one here, experimenting with lighting, just have a look at that um, and connect visually with this gorgeous little portrait, very atmospheric. Uh, another JG Bill shows you just how cool a portrait lit from a, an angle can be. Oh, and by the way, if you think my face is a little red, it's not to do with a high temperature. I'm in the conservatory.